One of the new selection methods available in HTML5 is get elements by class name. When you call this function, it will query the DOM looking for any element that matches the class that you pass to it. Now take note, unlike jQuery, this is not a CSS selector. So I'm passing in the actual name of the class when I'm calling get elements by class name. Now, if we take a look over at the results pane, you'll see that I have a number of different divs available. Each one of those divs has the class name of item applied to it. So when I run the code to get elements by class name, I have six item elements available. This is a very useful selector because I know there's many people who turn to jQuery just in order to have functionality like this. Again, jQuery and all the other libraries still bring a lot to the table, but it's nice to know that this function is now available native in the browser. The next function is query selector. Query selector is a selection function that accepts CSS3 selections and returns the result. So by calling document.querySelector and passing in a CSS3 selection, I'm able to get the result. So in this instance, this div has the ID of log. So running that JavaScript will select the div with the ID of log and then append some text into it. So you can see that this is selected via document.querySelector. Now you want to use query selector when you only want one result. If you pass in a query up here that returns more than one result, it will only give you the first matched result. So you either want to pass in a string that you know will only have a unique result on the page. And again, even if it matches a set, it'll just return the first matched item. If you want to truly deal with a set though, then you can use query selector all. What query selector all does is takes again a CSS3 selection, finds the matched elements against that selection and returns the result. But query selector all will return a set and not just a single item. So in this example, I'm using query selector all to find all the divs on the page. Then I'm using query selector just to find my log element. So now when I run the code, you can see that there are 18 different divs on this page. Now, one of the ways that we're used to using document get element by ID, or even as you've seen here with the other selectors, you must call these functions off the root of document. The nice thing though about query selector all and query selector is that you can use them off of individual DOM elements. So in this sample, you can see that first I'm starting off by calling document get element by ID and returning the DOM element for my result pane. So the DOM element that it, this is pointing to is this whole gray area here. Then from inside that result pane, I can call query selector all looking for all the divs within this result pane. Then from there, I can also take a look at the result pane and do query selector against that and just look for the item that matches an element with the ID of log. So now when I run this code, you can see that there are only seven divs in the div result pane. So these selectors are now narrowed down just to this element. So the queries run only against the child elements of the root. So in other words, you can start off with any DOM element and run query selector all or query selector in order to make your selections. And I do this interchangeably even when using jQuery, which we'll see in some of the samples to come. So it's all about knowing when to use the right tool at the right time. And again, you'll have an opportunity to see that in action in the rest of the modules.